Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to show you how I painted this Blood Bowl Troll Skin. Oh, before we start painting, do subscribe to the channel if you like minis and mecha. That's good. We start with Game Extra Opaque Heavy Green. This is a very opaque, obviously, color and it's perfect for painting over the black primer. I still advise to thin the paint and paint it in around 2 to 3 thin coats instead of one heavy coat as usual. Once the heavy green is dry, now we paint with flat green. So we paint less surface as usual. But I started painting this around April and I know how to paint a little bit better these days. Also, I kinda like postponed the painting of this model because I was waiting for my red grass wet palette at that time. So we're going to pick this up. You'll notice that at the middle part of this video, I'll be using some red grass stuff. The model color flat green is very nice and I was a bit surprised because it's a basic color and it ended up really nice. It's a very nice undercoat. And now we're painting with a green with a long name. It's a lighter color and we're painting less surface as usual and building up or sketching the highlights of this model. Now we paint with golden olive. I love this color because it's golden and it's olive seriously though the golden olive is bright and very vibrant but it's pale at the same time during the time when i was painting this to be honest i don't really know how to introduce like the red peach flesh colors of trolls and orcs so what i do here or what i did here is build up the lighter colors now we're painting beige over the lighter skin and then we'll paint the flesh over this beige or light colors so it's it's i i feel it's simpler and i feel that painting reddish flesh over the beige colors is easier than painting those reddish flesh over the green paint once you are happy with the beige painting, we're going to do my cheat code. We're going to use Game Ink Skin Wash. You all know by now that I love my inks. They stain a lot and they're more like, they stain a ton more than washes. So since inks stain more, I kinda like thin the inks here around 1 is to 1 with water. So it's fugly now, but the inks basically blended all of the colors together. And now we're, we need to paint all of the actual colors again because of the inks. But it's a necessary step to blend everything together. So after building up like the colors, lighter colors and stuff, usually with ice yellow and ivory, we came up with like very nice skin with lots of highlights now we use deep forest skin a very deep bluish green color for the like the rough skin parts the plates on the skin we mix the same color with ivory and use it to highlight the skin now we use golden olive again i really love this color we mixed it a bit with white gray also using it Coming up with like a very light green color, I'm using it now to highlight further the plating on the skin. We are almost done. We're basically just doing finishing touches on this model. But do watch until the latter part of the video for our tip time. Now we use Fire Flame. Fire Flame is lighter than Dark Vermilion because the Dark Vermilion is dark. <laughs> we thin the Fire Flame around two parts water and one part Fire Flame and use it to glaze around areas where we want to like introduce a fleshy like color to the green skin. This gives like a more not realistic as there's no real orc or troll but it gives like a more organic feel to the model now we're painting shadows really defined shadows with deep forest skin 
I kind of just learned this technique because before I just rely on washes and inks to define the shadows and now I realize that painting the shadows create more definition. Now it's tip time. Now let's use some inks to like introduce more color to the model. Also this will be like our glazing process in a way because if you've noticed I don't really glaze the paints and I just do sketching at the start of painting the model. The inks will let me blend everything together and they give more definition and even add color to the model. For non-Vallejo painters who use Citadel washes like the contrast paints, basically the inks feels the same although they are less opaque and very transparent and but they, they do act the same in a way and also they blend everything together. It's a nice glazing technique if you're not fond of glazing while painting the colors of the model so it's a matter of just sketching all the colors and then at the end of the painting process you do some inks or contrast paints or washes to really define the shadows and add a bit of color to the model once you are happy with your ink work you just let it dry i use a hair dryer to speed up the process and now we paint more highlights with the highlight skin in real life, you could actually flip-flop from highlighting, doing a bit of washes, doing a bit of ink work, and do a bit of layering because that's how we like try to come up with the desired result that we want. But since this is a demo for, for uh, like a painting tutorial, I try to like simplify the process by showing you the step-by-step. -step. But it's not like that in real life. You could flip-flop all those, these techniques to come up with a really good miniature. So that's it. I think I'm going to finish this model off-camera, but I'm going to post the finished model like in my website, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. That's it, we're done. I hope you liked the video. Do like, comment, subscribe, and consider joining the channel so that you'll be part of our Discord community. Saludos! Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my channel. I'm an affiliate painter for Redgrass Games and also the head mecha and sci-fi painter for Vallejo Colors. I write painting articles for Fine Scale Modeler Magazine I also write articles for Fantasy Figures International magazine. Lastly, if you're into Gunpla, do use my discount code for usagundomstore.com. Links down below.